The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. And uh, before we get into the program, I want to address a question that we had uh, several questions, several of the same type of question have come in this week. And it's in regards to Timber Pro Coatings. Uh, internal wood stabilizer, Holly. Uh, we had several questions come in. What, what was that? Pro? What was that? So yeah, they wanted to know what what we were talking about. Right. It's uh, Timber Pro Coatings uh, from Timber Pro Coatings. Uh, the website is Timber Pro Coatings. USA.com. It's an internal wood stabilizer. It protects the wood from the inside out. It never wears off. It's really good for raised beds, chicken coops, decks, patios. You name it. It's uh, it's the ideal thing. So Timber Pro Coatings USA.com. If you go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and search or and click on the season six tab at the top of the page, all of the sponsors you hear during the program are listed there. And if you want coupon codes, you go under the money tab at the top of the page uh, to help you out. Well, the money tab. The money tab. So we're going to help you out and and go over summer squash and winter squash because. There are gardeners, there are people um, in, in many different avenues, but they think that summer squash is something you grow in the summer and winter you grow in the winter. I've, I've had these questions, we've had these questions asked to us, and they're just uneducated. That's, that's all it is. They just don't know. Right. If, if you told right. me a widget digit went in the front of a car to make it turn better, I maybe would think that might be a questionable thing. But A widget digit? A widget digit. <laughs> okay. next, to, next to the thingamadig. Next to the thingamadig. Okay. So they're winter. just it's just uneducated. It, they it's they have a question. That means they want to learn. Right. No judgment. Nope. Not at all. Um, so yeah, so summer squash is squash that is growing in the summer. <laughs> I mean they're both growing yes, in the summer. Both are growing in the summer. But summer squash is the one that is going to be eaten during the summer. It doesn't have a long shelf life. Not that you can't eat winter squash during the summer. And I, I will it, debunk that uh we grow black beauty zucchini mm-hmm. and there's times where we let them grow much larger than what you may feel comfortable with meaning 18 20 inches and the size of a baseball bat and we've kept them inside and have ate them in march from the harvest in august now that is un- now they're not that's, always uh, that's untraditional they're not always super delicious. no 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 no. they're very dry but they are edible but if you put them in like a soup or right. um just like uh, pan saute them. Saute. They become... <laughs> we tried the soup thing in the crock pot. <laughs> right. Saute them is the way we or, like it. Or maybe if you have like a stew or something, you're adding a little bit of zucchini. I probably wouldn't recommend that for a patty pan or like a, a crook neck squash. So but... you direct sow these. Don't buy these at your garden center. Either one. You t- get the seeds from Jung's. Use coupon code 10 TG22. Save 10% on your order and direct sow them because they are very root. Uh, sensitive. They're, they're, they don't like to be moved around. Once they are established, you don't want to take them out of a seed tray and try to plant it. Drexome, seven to ten days, those suckers are up and they are rolling. Yeah. So they, they don't take long to germinate and then once they grow, they're they're usually ready to harvest within 60 to 90 days. But you have to do it after you have planted, right around or past the summer, the, the tomato planting because these are not a cool plant this no, they, they want the heat yeah they're a warm weather crop they want the heat and again like joy said like at probably the week or so after you plant your tomatoes is when you would plant your summer squash now if you do run into any sort of issue you could always wait a little bit maybe if you aren't sure if it might get cold or something like that or rainy where the seeds might get washed out and not germinate so you can wait but you do want to usually do them after the tomatoes full sun for both of them yeah uh, the summer squash again 60 to 90 days to harvest that harvesting is from the time it goes in the physical ground to the harvest winter squash you're looking between 90 100 to 120 days based on the variety that's a, that your your full season there and based on it where you're at in the country you may need to start these in undercover or actually do what we don't want you to do is start them in a tray or a cup in order to get a couple of weeks growth on them because you are short. You know, if you're in that zone three area in the far north, you don't have much time to play around. You've only got so many warm days and that's it. 
Right. So you want to keep that in mind that you want to be as efficient as possible, especially with the summer squash, because that's the one that the winter um, squash. Or, I'm yeah. sorry, the winter squash that takes the, the longer bit of time. So it's definitely recommended to to plant them as soon as you can. So you might run into some issues. Summer squash, one issue that you might have is poor pollination. And so summer squash has and a lot of viney plants do this where they'll put their female flowers out first and it's like a tester. So if you start seeing your female flowers come out, you want to go ahead and take and just touch the middle of that flower. You just tap each one in the middle and it's going to indicate to the plant that, hey, I'm going to have some germination. I'm going to have some pollination rather. And it's it's like a weird, not weird, but it's a plant science. Mm -hmm. Plants are not like, hey, I'm going to grow myself for humans. No, they're they're there to to strive and survive and recreate more plants. So if it, this plant doesn't think it's going to have a chance of pollination, it won't put out as many male flowers as it might need. So if it thinks it's going to get pollinated, then it puts out more male flowers. So again, for the summer squash, what are some very common summer squash varieties, Holly? Sure. So summer squash, I had mentioned a couple, um, patty pan, and then there's zucchini. There's a few different varieties right. of zucchini. And then yellow crookneck, one called kusa, which is becoming more popular. And then uh, chayota or chayote, I'm not really sure how you say it, but that is another one that is becoming more popular. And typically your summer squashes grow more in a bush type of uh, psych or a, a typical growth in a, in a bush. Your winter squash is the vine. Right. So, yep. So then your, your summer squash Growth has, style. The style was the yeah, word I was looking for. It's there. more it's more bushy or more yes. contained. So that being said, the winter squash, there are a few issues that you might run across. One of them is called powdery mildew. And this, well, both of them can. Well, yeah, both of them can do this, but it's, it's more common for the winter squash. Right. And there's a few things you can do. One is you can take a diluted vinegar water and spray that powdery mildew. We've used milk. Do we use anything yeah, else? Uh, milk and vinegar. The powdery mildew is a mildew, and by incorporating or ad adding that um, substance, whether it's vinegar, milk, or other means, you're disrupting the pH level on that leaf. Now, some people will swear that it will wash off, you know, and wipe it off, and other people will, it will allow the plant to finish doing its uh, growth. The mildew is preventing photosynthesis from occurring, blocking the sunlight, choking the plant off is what is occurring. The reason why powdery mildew exists, Holly, is because the cool nighttime temperatures, the dew or the water on the leaf cannot evaporate off before those nighttime temperatures come, and that's, that's where the mildew comes. You don't have good air circulation in your bathroom. Mildew occurs after after a certain period of time. Same thing's happening on the leaves of these plants. Summer, you don't have it so much because that, that shorter life cycle, but the winter, because of the long duration, you have that. You also have... Uh, you also have squash vine borer. Yeah, the squash vine borer is a, it's a, uh, is it a moth? Yeah, it's a moth. Heard, yeah, a moth. Yep. And what it does is it, it burrows its, uh, it burrows eggs into the lower part of your, your winter squash, the lower part of the stalk. And then it so like kind of drills into right. the stalk. This is, this is the summer squash too. So this yeah. is everybody. So it's, it'll, it's not discriminatory. It take it right. hits everybody. Except for, Butternut. Butternut. Because that stem is too thick for it to burrow into. Right. So what it does is it takes its, it drills into the thing, into the stalk, and then it lays its eggs and the leg, the eggs become larva. So what will happen is you'll see that you're, you'll go out there and see your zucchini or whatever. One of your squashes looks kind of sad, like wilty. And then you water it and you think, okay, well, maybe it was just a hot day. It needed water. You come back and it still looks wilty. So what happens is that larva is eating the inside of the stalk um, taking away the, the nutrients. So you want to cut a portion of, uh, you want to do surgery, you want to open up the stalk at the place where you see the the hole going in, typically right around the base or a couple inches from ground level, and make a three or four inch slit and just open it up like you would if you were doing it like on a, on a human, and you're going to see this larva, these little white worms, and you're going to dig them out and dispose of them, and that is what, and we've got videos on our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener .com. Just type in squash vine borer, and we walk you through how to do this, and this is how we have had squash for many, many years. 
uh, in order we surgically remove them, the, the, the larva, in order for the squash to survive. Now, some people do wait. They wait until after June to plant their squash. and that's Summer squash, but the yeah, winter don't work that not way. Not the winter, yeah, but the summer. Because then that usually, at that point, the vine borer is done laying their larva. So you, you do have that option if you have enough time, if your growing zone is long enough for that. And some winter squash is butternut, spaghetti, acorn, um, pumpkins. Pumpkins, pumpkins. Uh, gourds are a form of squash. The pink, I think it's like a pink, pink banana. Pump, pink or banana, like yeah. yeah. There's a lot of winter squashes in which you can grow. And now you know a little bit more about how you can get them to sustain life when you have diseases such as powdery mildew and squash vine borer. Well, another way in which you can sustain yourself is by butchering your own animals or at least getting spices and the tools you need in order to do uh, cooking correct in your kitchen. we got a different coupon code, so hang out, and we'll give you that in a moment. Yeah, waltonsinc.com has everything you need. Um, they are our sponsor, and... It was, it's been brought to you today by Walton's Inc. We know you care about where your food comes from. They have all sorts of canning, or not canning, uh, spices and seasonings and supplies to make anything from sausage, jerky, any other meat product for just general cooking. Um, Thermometers, and then, knives, sausage stuffers, the whole deal. You, if, if, it, if it, you need everything but the meat, Walton's has it. And a ham, they have hamburger presses. That's, that yep. was, that's kind of fun. Um, all sorts of great stuff. And then they have meatgistics.com, which is an inf informational site community where you can ask questions. You have, there's people, there's 15,000 users to help educate and what's the meat processing yeah. and whatnot process. So you can go to waltonsinc.com or meatgistics.com. There is a coupon code that we have. It's GROW50 to save 10% off orders of $50 or more and get free shipping. You And then you can go ahead to waltonsinc.com and, and use that code. Yeah, GROW50, G-R-O-W-5-0. That's a new coupon code they've issued. So uh, use that one, GROW50, to get $50, uh, get 10% off your order of $50 or more and get free shipping. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. <laughs> 